Hey everybody. Sorry for the poor lighting situation. Um, this is kind of a quick throw together video I want to go ahead and post tonight. And you know, it's been a little while, especially for you guys on the Cure channel, uh, for me to post a video. It's been really busy with things. You know, life gets in the way and you know, stuff like that. Some of you guys know that I'm located in North Carolina. I'm located just north of Charlotte, North Carolina in Huntersville. And for the past several days, my focus has been on Hurricane Florence. And by every passing forecast, it seems like things are just getting worse. You know, it started out as a huge threat for coastal North Carolina and coastal South Carolina. And even the earlier forecasts were forecasting the storm to be historic. Yeah, historic. Um... Category 4 with extreme storm surge. I mean, they're saying this thing could rival Hurricane Hazel or be even worse than Hazel. Um, it's currently a Category 3 hurricane as of right now. And they're expecting it to start to impact the coast starting tomorrow, Thursday, September 13th, 2018. And as the forecasts have... Um, have been revised. You know, initially this thing was supposed to come on shore and stall and sort of track toward Raleigh and be a huge, huge um, threat for, I mean, at least as far as rain totals go, I think what they were originally forecasting was is for this to be mainly a threat toward central and eastern North Carolina and um, South Carolina and Western North Carolina not to be impacted nearly as bad, but now the, the 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 forecasts have changed to where practically the majority of North Carolina and South Carolina are supposed to be getting a um, pretty major impact from this thing. Um, Eastern North Carolina, I think, is supposed to be getting in some areas up to 40 inches of rain and storm surge of Geez, I forget exactly how much, but it was it was huge numbers. Heck, a matter of fact, um, the Outer Banks right now they're already getting surge, and the storm hasn't even got here yet. So that comes to show just how bad this thing's likely going to be. Um, yeah, it's this got me pretty worried, and just like with Hurricane Matthew back in 2016, we got some rain out, but Eastern North Carolina was just they they got severely flooded out. And this is this is like another repeat, except I'm thinking you know, I'm worried this is going to be worse than that. Um, and of course, keep you know keep us all in your thoughts and prayers, because really I've been I've been telling my coworkers and my friends you know today and all week I say um, prepare for the worst and hope for the best because they don't know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, you look at this forecast track and it's been all over the place. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, they, now they're saying it's supposed to come on shore, kind of veer to the south, and go through South Carolina and possibly into Georgia. I mean, there's no telling where the thing is going to go. And, and you know, all these different models are showing different rain totals for different areas. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, a lot of people are are panicking over this thing, and I don't suggest panicking. But yeah, it's just, it's it's going to be bad, no doubt. It's going to be bad. And I think if you're in an area to where you have received a mandatory evacuation, by all means, get out. I mean, I've, I've been reading and watching videos of the news and seeing some people are going to ride this thing out. Well, you know, is it really worth gambling your life over a weather forecast? Because, I mean, or, I mean is it really worth gambling your life over your possessions. I mean, this storm, from what the for from what a lot of meteorologists have been saying, this thing is going to be making history. And I don't know. I mean, I don't really know what to say there. But by all means, if I mean, if you're watching this video tonight in Eastern North Carolina. This is your last chance to get out. 
evacuate. Um, anyways, as far as this area is concerned, you know, initially they were saying that it might be a couple of inches of rain, blah, 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 blah. But now they're saying we could pick up five, six inches of rain, possibly more than that. Heck, it doesn't take a whole lot of rain to start flooding in this area, especially with all the thunderstorms you've had. I mean, we've... <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, if you've been in this area, you know what I'm talking about. All the thunderstorms that we've had in this area. If you've been watching CubeComp MTDX, you may see I've, I've posted quite a few videos over the summer. We did have a small drought um, in July, but overall, this summer has been quite wet. <laughs> There have been, you know, since the ending of the drought back in about mid-July, I think I can't remember exactly when it was, we did have a dry spell. But after the dry spell ceased, uh, we had lots and lots of downpours. Um, yeah, we had downpours last night, we had downpours tonight, we had lots of downpours last week. I mean, heck, out of my garden. Um, the only, there's only been... I think there have been more days where I didn't have to water because of the rain. We've had quite a bit of rain. So the soil is getting already saturated. And when this thing comes ashore, where, I mean, it could do a number of different things. But I, I'm thinking, no matter what forecast you look at, it's not going to be good. I had just seen a post online where Duke Energy is predicting you know, a good possibility that I think like two thirds of its customers could lose power. That is serious. Um, you know, considering what's going on, it reminds me of of when Hurricane Floyd come in. Now, I wasn't alive when Hurricane Hugo come through. However, my, of course, my mom and dad and my grandparents would they all lived here in North Carolina at the time, and they got to witness it and it tore up Jack. Um, the difference between Florence and Hurricane Hugo was Hugo was in and out within hours. Florence is supposed to be sort of like what Harvey did to Texas. It come on shore and it just sat there and sat there and rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. <laughs> and that, that, that alone <clears throat> It's a scary thought. And what else is scary is the fact that much of North Carolina and South Carolina have both picked up lots of rain over the summer from typical summertime thunderstorms. And like matter of fact, yesterday parts of Charlotte had flooding because thunderstorms that popped up didn't they just popped up and sat there and rained and rained and rained. Um, <clears throat> late last night we had a nice downpour in Huntersville, and today we've had several downpours. And it's been this way throughout much of the state, and also up in the other parts of the um, eastern part of the United States, that they we've, you know, they've been re receiving the remnants of Gordon. So these areas are already the ground is already saturated, and when you bring in sometimes in you know, some areas, forty inches of rain, that's gonna be bad. That's going to be really bad. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm making a second part onto the um, video here, so I apologize if I repeat a few things. But as far as the forecasting goes, there it has gone all over the place as far as how much rain we're supposed to pick up. In this area, um, the Piedmont area, I'm seeing that we could be getting pretty moderate amounts. Like sometimes, I mean, depending on what forecast you look at, I've seen like five, six inches of rain. It could be more than that, it could be less, we don't know. And even just five inches. And, yeah, and of course, that's a lot of rain. But, I mean, even that amount would be very bad for this area. Um, there, are, there are a lot of low-lying areas around here that are susceptible to flooding. Matter of fact, there's a neighborhood right next to where I live that back that backs up to Torrance Creek. And also, we have um, Mountain Isle Lake, Lake Norman. You know, lots of lots of bodies of water. 
and area and, and um, properties near that could be in for some serious flooding. So again, it's, it's no telling what's really going to happen with this thing. So yeah, the difference between um, what's coming now and Hurricane Hugo was, again, Hugo, if I didn't mention, once it made landfall, it moved through quickly. It was gone by the next morning. It moved in and made its wrath overnight. <clears throat> Since it came through so quickly, flooding wasn't the major um, wasn't the major cause of damage. It was the winds and these tornadoes that were better than this hurricane that I think were the cause of the most damage. <clears throat> while I wasn't again, while I wasn't alive at the time Hugo came through. I did get to go up and witness <clears throat> some of the damage that it caused. For example, my grandma and grandpa's property, there is a walking, or was a walking trail, through the woods. And I remember as a little kid, like a two or three year old, <clears throat> walking on this trail, seeing all these trees that had been, that had been cut. The trees had had fallen and we're clear from the trail. And I was like, Mommy, why are all these trees here for? And she says, Son, that's Hurricane Hugo. And over the years of growing up, I have witnessed Mother Nature reclaim her territory back in these woods. And I've, you know, I've watched these woods get more and more dense back to what I believe were pre-Hugo, um, what, what it was like before Hurricane Hugo came through. Um... <clears throat> And it's funny, for all these years I've been wondering um, what the place looked like before Hugo. I managed to stumble upon some old some old VHS footage that my mom shot. And it just it, it was a wake up call as how much hurricanes can can really change things. And considering the fact that Hugo came through so quickly and did that amount of damage, when you have a storm that's sitting on you with these winds or similar winds plus the rainfall it's I mean it's unimaginable at least for me anyway so my first time riding out a hurricane was Hurricane Floyd back in 1999 while it didn't make a direct it didn't make a direct hit to the Piedmont it did um, go through the um, eastern part of the state and I'll never forget <clears throat> just how windy it was, even just on the outer bands of this of this storm. And somewhere, I know somewhere, there's got to be an old Sony 8mm camcorder tape <laughs> from video footage that I shot during riding this thing out because when I was a kid, I was always into weather and filming weather. Gee, I wonder why I filmed so much weather stuff on, and posted to CubeComp and DDX. <laughs> But I'll never forget seeing the fear and um, see my mom's eyes and also, you know, as we prepare for this thing, we prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And that's essentially the same thing I've been saying to anybody I haven't talked to about this thing is prepare for the worst and hope for the best because we don't know what's going to happen with Hurricane Florence. And fast forward over the years, I've witnessed a few close calls with hurricanes. Um, most of the time that we experience any sort of tropical activity, it was this remnants of of landfalling hurricanes, and usually by the time they got, they got to us, they were like tropical storms or remnant lows, you know, stuff like that. You remember back in 2016 when we um, um, when Hurricane Matthew uh, passed through the state, and at least in this area, we got mostly rain from it, and it was quite a bit of rain. In 2017, we had the scare of Hurricane Irma because at first they were forecasting it to take a, a hit onto the Carolinas, but it ended up going south and going to Florida, I think, if I remember right. <clears throat> but with Florence, it's, um, it's, it's like this. Um, I started noticing Florence not long after they announced its um, formation out in the Atlantic, and over a couple of days, I've, I've you know monitored the forecast and noticed it was just on a beeline heading this direction. 
and <clears throat> one of my longtime childhood friends on Facebook asked me, Nick, what do you think is going to happen with this hurricane? Is it going to hit us? And I replied back to her, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really concerned about this one. Don't know what's going to happen just yet, but I'm concerned. And let me just tell you, I am a bit nervous because, again, with the forecast, we don't know what's going to happen. But some of the more recent forecasts have taken it, um, making landfall you know, around uh, Wrightsville Beach, Wilmington, that area, and making a curve to the south and going through South Carolina. And so it's going to be a, um, not just a major North Carolina event, but also a major South Carolina event as well, and possibly a Georgia event. Uh, maybe not quite as much of Virginia as they initially had thought, but Virginia's, I don't think Virginia's out of the woods just yet. Um, what's really concerning is now this thing, it, the, the current projected path puts Charlotte you know, the area that, you know, I lit the, the Charlotte metro area puts it in the northern quadrant of the storm and that is one of the worst places to be in a hurricane like, or any tropical system when that makes landfall because those are the areas where you get a lot of those spin up tornadoes those quick spin up tornadoes that can do some serious damage um, <clears throat> and this thing's supposed to sit on us for several days I mean at least in the Piedmont we're supposed to start seeing um, the winds are supposed to start picking up Friday and I think Friday night into Saturday into Sunday and into Monday and possibly Tuesday now um, this thing is supposed to be <laughs> in this area and some of the forecasts are now showing that it may not weaken as fast as they thought and this and again that brings up Hurricane Hugo um, I believe at first when they were forecasting Hugo um, they were forecasting it by the time it got to Charlotte it would be just you know, like a tropical storm but no I think it was still like a category 2 by the time it got, it got to Charlotte <laughs> so you know when you look at the weather forecast, it's like it's like a general idea of what's possibly going to happen, but not a guarantee. So that's why they always say, "Prepare for the worst, but hope for the best." Um, and this, I think, it's a prime example. Now, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. It's just this is kind of a quick slap together video. It's kind of late at night. I'm tired, but I wanted to get this video uploaded. Um, <clears throat> So anyways, the local school system, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, has canceled classes for tomorrow and Friday because at least five schools in the county are going to be used as shelters for evacuees. Um, I know a lot of colleges have canceled classes. I think UNC Charlotte has canceled classes. Um, Central Piedmont Community College, however, they're still holding classes tomorrow as scheduled because CPCC does not have on-campus housing, so it's a community college. So. Um, they're not having to mass evacuate students off of campus. You know, they're not they're not having to be so concerned about students who live on campus because that's not existent with community college. But um, <clears throat> yeah, again, CMS is CMS is being closed tomorrow. Um, some colleges, at least in this area, have already closed and uh, have already canceled classes, and ones on the east coast have already canceled and, and ordered students to evacuate. It's gonna be bad. I'm afraid it's gonna be a pretty bad storm. Special for those on the eastern part of the state, it's, and it's to me it's unimaginable what's going, what the eastern part of the state's going to look like after this thing is uh, finished. Like the Outer Banks, you know, places like that. You know, these hurricanes are what shape have shaped the Outer Banks over the years. For example, Oregon Inlet. If you're familiar with with our state, the Oregon Inlet was formed by a hurricane back in the 1800s. And Hurricane Irene back in 2011 formed a small inlet um, south of there, and it's it's likely going to do some severe damage to or destruction to homes and businesses on the islands. Her, um, NC12 is going to probably get washed out in several areas, and I'm curious as to what's going to happen with the old Bonner Bridge and the new Bonner Bridge. Um, yeah, because I mean. 
when they're comparing Hurricane Florence to Hazel, I mean, I forget exactly what year Hazel hit, but um, let me just see real quick. Nineteen fifty four. The Bonner Bridge was built in nineteen was finished in nineteen sixty three. Um so I mean it's like not, not now as far as I know the outer banks are not gonna get a Drake hit, but they're still gonna get nailed pretty bad by Storm Surge. Always from North Carolina and parts of South Carolina are gonna get nailed pretty bad. Um <clears throat> things I wonder about, for example, in Myrtle Beach where we used to where we used to go on vacation every year at the Apache Campground. I wonder if the Apache Pier is going to be still standing after this thing. Hurricane Matthew um, bulldozed the end off of it back in 2016. I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of what ifs and a lot of what's going to happen. Um, really, it's again. I know I've mentioned it probably dozens of times now, but it's prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And if you're on the east coast of either North, North or South Carolina, get out. If you're watching this video tonight, this is your last chance to get out before this thing gets here. The thing is, is that if you decide to stay and something happens to you, you can't um, take for granted that first responders are going to be there or are going to be able to get to you. Matter of fact, I, I heard on the news tonight that in North Carolina, refusal to evacuate under mandatory evacuation could land you with a criminal record. It could put a misdemeanor on your record. So, I mean, I, I, you know, for those who choose to stay, it's really your call. Um, you're taking your life in your own hands, I think. But anyways, let's go and wrap this up. For anybody out there um, watching this, keep North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, and these areas in your thoughts and prayers because the phrase is going to get ugly. There's no telling what's going to happen. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Well, guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeCompMTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for your support.